he was about the opportunity. And what I want to talk about today is, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. If, if uh, Ed Marlette or Jeff Levitan or, or Rob Day or Guillermo Haro or any of the leaders walked into your base shop, walked into your BPM, was invited, do you have a system that would recruit an individual like that? Is your system tight? Are you running a system with precision? Do you go over the basic fundamentals within your system? Here's what I want to talk to you about as we take a look at that. Where's my clicker? Oh, here we go. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the business presentation meeting. Oh. Here we go. The BPM schedule, the pregame meeting. We do something in our meeting every Tuesday night Call the pregame meeting, and my pregame meeting starts around 6:30. Here's the concept of the pregame meeting: I am constantly focused on my team, how they feel about the meeting, how they feel about what they're doing. The purpose, the outcome of the pregame meeting is to make sure that our physiology, our language, our focus, everyone's pumped up, everyone's fired up, everyone's excited about the opportunity. Because here's what happens: as you're doing a day-to-day -day thing, it's very easy for you to allow your meeting to become just a routine thing, right? So you want to get everyone excited. The energy, the energy, there's music in there, and we're not playing, we're not playing like, uh, we're not playing this elevator music. I mean, we're playing rock and roll and rap and, you know, all this stuff, you know, all the clean stuff, of course, but the music loud, it's exciting. We've got everyone in there, and everyone has a role. The pregame meeting starts building, hand out assignment in peak state. Want to make sure everyone's in a peak state everyone's excited if you take a look at duties right duties sergeant at arms sergeant at arms their responsibility is to make sure that everyone everything's put up from the AV to the chairs to, to all the different things room setups. who's setting up the room the over overhead projector video computer who's in charge of that if their names on there it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the one that's going to be doing it but they're in charge of doing that so if I have a if I have a challenge with the room set up, I go to Scott and Glenn. They're in charge of making that happen. Music, Damon, Damon and Billy is in charge of music, sign-in, tour coordinators, greeters and ushers, tours, tour catcher. Now let's talk about tours. In our office, in our office, we have a tradition in our office. When a new person walks into our office and they sign in, and we'll talk about that, they go to a tour of our office. Every marketing director, their stories told, the history, the legacy, and all this stuff is told on every single tour. Then we have greeters and ushers. When they walk in, when they walk in, we don't have people in front of our BPM smoking or on the cell phones or any of that. It's real clean when you walk into our office. You get, you get greeted by an usher. They open the doors. Welcome to our office. We've got, uh, we've got uh, tours and tour catchers. And once we're done with the tour, we control the Mozone, which means the tour catchers, they catch the guests and they bring the guests and they invite, they, they introduce the guests to people in the BPM and we'll, we'll, we'll go over that. Mozone overseers, we make sure that everyone, we have people in charge of Mozone overseers to make sure that we control the environment. Everyone's mozoning. Everyone's talking about the right conversations. We're not talking about licensing or we're not in offices. They control the environment. We have uh, breaking the floor. We have a specific script on how we break the floor, right? Who's going to break the floor that night? And recognition. Mozone begins at 7 p.m. sharp. We start the music. We break the floor at 7.40. BPM begins at 7.45. BPM ends at 8.45. Orientation, we have the classes there. Orientation class, who's teaching the class? If you see trainers and co-trainers, trainers are the people actually training, uh, teaching the class, and the co-trainers, uh, there's always someone there learning on how to give the class, right? So we have the crusade, the, uh, the, uh, the compensation, technology promotion, general training. License agent, meeting after the meeting, base shop meetings after meetings, and all the different leaders there and what they'll cover in their meetings after the meetings. That's very important. As a leader, as a marketing director, here's what I want to tell you that I take the time out to do. I take the time out to visualize there's a time of my day on Tuesday for about an hour. I sit down in a room by myself and I visualize my meeting. 
I visualize the environment that I want to have in the, mo in the, in the, in the uh, pregame, how I want people to feel in the pregame. So if I walk in, if I walk in my pregame meeting and I notice it's kind of dull, okay, the music's slow, I'm very conscious of that because my outcome for the pregame meeting is for everyone to be fired up, inspired, excited, because when they're fired up, they're excited, guess what? They greet people, they greet people different. Their energy's different. And I constantly, in, inside a pregame meeting, your job is to sell the dream. Sell your dream to your teammates. Get them excited about it, right? So it's very important that you do that as a leader. Now, let's, oh, here we go. Here we go, Mozone, the key to creating an exciting quality professional recruiting environment. Mozone, the momentum zone. A meeting is not a meeting until it has Mozone before, during, and after the meeting. The most important thing, the most important thing you're gonna have on a Tuesday night or Wednesday night or Thursday or Saturday is Mozone. Mozone is recruits people. Understand human nature. What communicates to people, although the content of what you say is very important, your tone of voice and body language can have even more impact. I understand that. I understand your tone of voice, the way you feel about what it is that you're doing. Stop trying to recruit people to just a business opportunity. Recruit people to an environment. Here's, here's what I want to tell you. When I, was in the, when I was in the Marine Corps, I was doing this business part-time, right? When Ed recruited me into his, business, to his company, I was so excited about being there at the meeting. But my schedule, my schedule didn't allow me to be there every Tuesday or every Saturday because I was a firefighter. I worked 24 hours on, 24 hours off, 48 hours on, 48 hours off, right? So on certain weeks, I would work five days of the week and I would be off two days, and the next week I would be off five days and work two days. So on certain weeks, I could not come to the meeting. I literally could not come to the meeting. But I started finding ways, man, I got to get to the meeting because here's how the meeting made me feel, made me felt at the time. You're recruiting people to a dream, to a part-time part opportunity, right? And what people, what people are excited about, remember, people want to feel good. Everyone in your business wants you to make them feel good. They want you to make them feel special. They're not a part of something pumped up, fired up. They're not, they, they don't have that at their jobs. So on Tuesday nights, when I couldn't make it to the meetings, you guys, literally, here's what I did. I got to a point, I never missed a meeting. I got to a point where I had a pager, right? And I was in charge of aircraft rescue. If something fell out the sky, my guys had to respond, and we got to get the pilot out. We got to get everyone out of the aircraft. My guys were responsible for that. I trained my team where they can operate without me so I can make sure I go to the meeting. But here's why. Because I wanted to feel good. Every time I went to the meeting, you guys, I left there more excited. I left there fired up. I left there, I, I left there so enthused. I left there anticipation of my dreams and all of that stuff. I didn't want to miss that because I got juice from the meetings. I got excited. I didn't get a whole bunch of knowledge. Here's what we're going to do, and this is what makes sense. Here's this, here's that. I got a dream sold to me at the meeting, and that excited me. I couldn't miss that. I had to have that every week. Let me ask you a question. How does your people feel when they leave your meeting that night? Do they feel... Wow, wow, that was a really good talk. I mean, that was really blah, blah, blah. Or do they feel really excited? I, wanted, I, I, I felt enthused, right? People respond to what they feel, not what they hear. Wow, I wonder where we got that. People respond to what they feel, not what they hear. We build people, not sell products at BPM. Talents are not learnable, ability learnable. We offer two things, the opportunity to build a business of your own, the opportunity to learn how money works. And you know what I got excited about? I was in the field. I was in the field every night. Got excited about what we do for families across the kitchen table. So when it came time to go to the BPM on Tuesday night, I was really excited because I had 10, 12 appointments the week before. I got a chance to see what we do one-on-one, -on -one, right? Here we go. Are you guys getting something from this? Yes. Mozone moves people. You must have an absolutely com absolute commitment to Mozone. Your number one responsibility is to create a crowd-making machine. So if you got a little boutique with three, four, five people, you don't have any Mozone. You don't have any Mozone. You've got to get at least 30 to 50 people to be considered a crowd. If there is no crowd, there's no Mozone. 
So some of you, that you only have three, four, five, six, seven people in your base shop, and you're attempting to do a BPM, it's hard to get going because you don't have Mozone, right? If there's no crowd, there's no Mozone. Have banners, trophies, awards to help create the proper atmosphere in your meeting room, right? One of the things that we're doing in our office in Pomona, we're putting all type of banners, trophies, pictures, and awards, and all that stuff. P people like that. I notice, you know what, when I'm doing interviews, or people come into my office, they spend time looking at all the awards and all the traditions and all this stuff in your office. It's very important for you to have that environment in your office. Have exciting, uplifting music to help set the tone. Some people go, well, you know, I don't really want to play that because that's not professional. I didn't, well, why is the music too loud? Blah, 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 all this stuff, right? You guys, people, there's got to be an excitement in your office. It can't, you can't walk into a mo zone and you got elevator music in the background and everyone's talking kind of low. Well, yeah, well, I can't hear it because the music's too loud. Well, speak louder, right? You, it's, it's there for a reason, you guys. It's got to... Every time I do an interview, I ask, I ask every single person, what intrigued you the most about our company? You know what they tell me? It's the way I felt when I walked in the room. The energy I felt, the way everyone felt excited and pumped up about what they were doing. That's what, that's what, they, that's what people want to see. That's, what, that's the environment you've got to create in your base shop. As you're sitting here listening to this, you've got to be wondering, man, do I have that type of environment in my business? Here we go. Okay. Pre-game. We talked about this. Be prepared men mentally. Respond. People respond to based on what they fear. Environment. Professional appearance. When you arrive, go directly. Have all guests a registered name tag. Proper use leadership edification. That is very powerful in Mozone. Here's what I mean by that. If Steve Haig has a guest, and let's say the guest is a Marine, okay? Or let's say the guy was in the Navy, okay? Steve Haig, if Steve Haig has a guest that comes down to the BPM. They go through our tour. The tour catcher catches that guest, and he goes, oh, my God, Steve invited you? He goes, yes. Oh, my God, let me tell you, Steve Haig is awesome at the business. Let me tell you what he's done, right? They start edifying Steven. And they go, you, you got to be kidding me. You're a Marine? Let me introduce you to Dan. Dan, look, before I introduce you to Dan, let me tell you, Dan used to be in the Marine Corps. Here's what he, whatever the story is, right? So, so, so the, the tour catcher brings me Steve's guest. Says, Dan, let's say his name is Mike. Says, Mike, this is Dan Charlier. Let me tell you about Dan Charlier. Dan Charlier used to be in the Marine Corps. Here's what he did. Here's what, he came full time, he came part time with us in 1998. 1999, started making more money part time than he was making full time here. Came full time with us, boom, boom, boom. Edifies me, right? Whatever the edification is. He goes, Dan, this is a guess of Steve. And I, all of a sudden I go, Steve Haig? And he goes, yeah. And meanwhile, the guest is standing there going, Steve, Steve's just, I just thought Steve was just like every other guy. I go, oh my God, you're a guest of Steve. And he tells me a little bit about this guy. Says, hey, Mike is, Mike is in the Marine Corps right now, blah, 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 and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Mike and Dan starts to talk. You're in the Marine Corps? Oh my God, what's your MOS? What do you do? And all of a sudden, we start to talk the same language, right? We start to talk the same language. And I said, oh my God, Mike, you've been invited by Steve? Oh, man, let me tell you about Steven. Let me tell you what, what he did and all of this stuff, right? And I said, you know what? you got to meet Bill. Bill used to be in the Navy. Man, this guy's fired up. He's doing great things here, right? So I bring him over to Bill. I said, Bill, you, get, you won't believe this, but this guy is a guest of Steve Haig. And he goes, and, and once again, he goes, man, I just thought Steve Haig was just... Right? And I, I edify Steve Haig, and I go, man, let me tell you, let me tell you what Mike's done. Mike used to be in the military, blah, 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 blah. Edify him, right? Then I say, then I'll say, Mike, this is Bill. Let me tell you about Bill, and I'll edify Bill. And that leadership edification happens, that edification happens all through the Mozone. That's what's going on. All the blue name tags are worried about is red get, red name tags, which are guests. Edifying the guests. Then the Mozone breaks, right? They go into BPM. Here's what I tell you. I could put the worst speaker inside the BPM to speak, and if we have a great Mozone, we'll recruit 99.9% .9 of the people in there. We'll recruit 99.9% .9 of... So let me ask you a question. Why would you work on anything else but your Mozone? 
Why would you work on anything else but your mozo? Everyone has to be able to edify like that, and it helps everyone else grow their team. Find your guests in a seat near the front. Tell your guests you'll be in the next room training. You'll see them at the meeting, see them after the meeting. Toward the end of the meetings, MDs and others will be in introduced. So at the end of your, at your end of your BPM, you've got a session where you introduce the local leadership, the local leadership to your guests. This is so-and-so. This is a story. This is so-and-so. This is a story. And all the leaders give a two-minute talk on, on, on their success stories. BFS classes. BFS classes. In your BPM, here's the challenge. In your BPM, you've got some people that just joined your business. You've got people that's been there for two years. You've got people that's been there for three years. You can't send a blanket message to everyone in your base shop every single month, every single week. You can't do that. Because you, although, you, although you're thinking you're giving a great message, there's 90% of the room sitting there going, God, I heard this a thousand and one times, blah, 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 right? So you've got to have a system that controls that. Phase one, three classes, the orientation class. The orientation class. What you want to make sure is that in your classes, you're just not giving information. You're inspiring. You're speaking to the heart, not to the mind, right? So you got to make sure that your instructors, uh, your instructor is selling the dream and also providing value in, in each class. Orientation class, Crusade or BFS, the compensation technology, that's phase one, right? So when a new person comes into my business, the first three weeks they go to those three classes. Then you have general training, phase two. That's class interchanges between the six steps of the BFS and also the financial format system. So we switch off one week, we're teaching the BFS, the six steps in the business format system. The next week, we're, we're uh, teaching the financial format system. Then in phase three, we have one class where we have all the license agent. If you have a securities license or a life license, you're going to phase three training, which is your since age of training, the Hopkins training, where we, teach, where we do role playing, we teach how to overcome objections, we teach a presentation, we actually do role playing and all of that stuff so we can grow the team. So if people feel, when people feel the meeting, when people leave the meeting, here's what they've got to feel. They've got to feel, one, they've got some value, two, they've got to feel inspired. So the teacher that's teaching that, you've got to be able to do both things, both things at the same time. The psychology behind each class is give the associate value for the meeting. After the meeting, after the meeting, which is extremely important, people really want to be led and supported. Take a new guest to get a BPM decision kit. Here's the deal, right? Your new, your guest comes down to the meeting. They're excited. They come down by themselves. Their wives at home. They're excited about the meeting. They're fired up. They're dreaming. They're coming back within an interview within 24 to 48 hours. They get home, right? And who do they talk to? They talk to their spouse, right? Or they talk to someone in their family. And someone says something to them negative. And they experience, they experience a scenario of disaster, right? So the next day, your person that was supposed to come down to the BPM or the, uh, to, to the interview, all of a sudden doesn't show up. Or you call that person, or you have someone in your base shop, the person that invited them, calls that person to confirm, and they go, well, you know, oh, I I, I've been thinking about it. Um, I really don't think that this thing's for me. The night before, they were excited, they were fired up. Guess what happened? Scenario of disaster. Someone said something to them negatively. It's usually their spouse said something to them negatively. Now, here's, what that ha here's why that happens in my business, right? Because filter two is what? The decision kit, right? The BPM decision kit, which they buy for $5. Right? They buy that kit, and we use the opportunity brochure, which they buy that kit for $5. Now, why do you want that guest to have that kit going home? Because that kit is a presentation, right? It gives information. So when they go home, right, they go home and their spouse says something, says something negative, right, about the opportunity, it doesn't really know anything about it, says, honey, you sit down, let's take a look at this. Here's, and, and they start going through it, right? And that kit tells their spouse everything you want them to hear. What they see is credibility, what we do for families, the income potential, the dreams, and all of these things that we have in the opportunity brochure. So you got to make sure in your system you have that. Hubert Humphrey said that the team, the team that pass out, passes out the most brochures long term will be the biggest team, will be the biggest team. 
Because that brochure is given a presentation long after you gave your presentation. When setting the appointment, be supportive of the person making the appointment. It's important that all of these steps, the first three speed filters, not speed filters, take place within 10 to 15 minutes. Which means this, if, if Brooks comes up to me and he says, he brings his guests up to me, right? I want that guest to interview within 24 hours, not 48. Right? So, so if, we, if we interview, if I notice the guest has an interview at, it's Tuesday night and they have an interview on Thursday, I say, look, I've got to, I've got to open up my schedule uh, Wednesday afternoon. Can we meet Wednesday afternoon? And 90% 90, 90 of the time, they'll go, yes. They just didn't think about it. Now, why do I want to meet with them within 24 hours instead of 48 hours? Scenario of disaster. I know that guy, from the minute he leaves the front door to he get in his car, he's already thinking about quitting. He's already thinking about why he can't do the business. He, he's already thinking all these negative thoughts. Man, a guy like me can't win big. A guy like me, what am I thinking? What was I fooling myself, right? He's thinking all these thoughts. So I know, as a leader, I got to get back in front of that guy within 24 hours if I want to recruit him. I want my people thinking the same thing. You go, hey, man, hey, Dan's schedule is extremely busy. Man, let's get in there tomorrow, blah, 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 and, and, and motivate and inspire that person to interview the next day. Because here's why. If I had a $10,000 check for that person and they had to be there the next day, they wouldn't give me any excuse on why they can't be there. And I know the value of this business is way more than a $10,000 check. So that's how I treat it. And that's how your people got to treat it. They got to be excited. And people do that when they're excited. Make sure all guests complete the, okay, we've got that. You should prepare a BPM decision kit for your guests in advance. The kit can be sold at cost $5 and should include the current approved version of our best recruiting material. The kit must not contain any product related material. Don't want any product related material there, all right? Okay, meeting after meeting. This is when you determine your BPM, here's the deal, you guys. You've got to have a specific schedule. I want my people, when they go to meeting, okay, they know exactly at 10 o'clock they're done and they're going back home. So I don't want a meeting, they do a meeting after the meeting, 11, 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, the next morning, because that wears your people out over a period of time. So this is when you determine who's real and who's committed, who's in and who's out, right? Recognize new team members and introduce them to the team. So all the new people that joined our team, we want to recognize them. We want to give them like a, maybe 30 seconds to tell, them, to tell us who they are and what they've done and what's their background. That helps in the Mo Zone, right? Build, build relationships among the entire team. The most important thing you're going to do with your team is you're going to build relationships with your team. Here's, here's something I want to remind you of. People, right? quit on team uh, quit on business partners but they don't quit on friends they don't quit on friends at all this is an endurance test practice the team's endurance determines who's serious about the business and let others know that if they're not serious they're welcome to leave the meeting they're welcome to leave the meeting and i don't take it personal right let them know that reach for the hearts of team members and get them to commit more Right? So if they're part-time, I want them to commit. I want to know when they're going full-time. If they're part-time, I want to make sure that they have a desk at the office. Right? They're paying rent at the office. They're coming in. They're volunteering their time and all of that. Discuss the current month's goals and resell the vision. So I, they constantly have to know that the team, we have a goal. We have a recruiting goal. We have a production goal. Right? Identify potential leaders and rising, ups and, uh, rising superstars. So what I constantly do, I go on WFG online and I pull up the top 20 personal producers. I pull up the top 20 personal recruiters. And we recognize those people in the meeting after meeting. We clap for them. They had one recruit. We're all over them. For, we're all over them. We're clapping for them. They're excited. And guess what? You build an environment. Well, guess what? People want to be recognized, right? So you recognize them for the things that you want them to do. Right? So we do that at the meeting after the meeting. That's the psychology. Okay. Are we good? Can we move to the next page? Oh, okay. Then we have the meeting after the meeting. Okay. Meeting after the meeting. The main objective is to determine a goal for the current week and share responsibility with the team leaders, right? Have a reality check. Find, reality check. Find out how mature your team is. Talk about issues. 
If you have challenges inside your team or you have, well, I want to move to this person's team and that and that, talk about those issues, right? Problems, help your team members focus. This is also the opportunity to determine if you have the right kind of team to reach the big time. And as a leader, you ask yourself, man, are these guys really, are these guys really focused? Are they re is this the team that's going to get me there? 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not, it's not that team. So you're going to have to personally go out there and start going wide and recruiting more people to that vision. Each team leader determines his or all organization's mission for the upcoming week. So if I base shop, if I go is to do 25 recruits that week, right? So at that meeting after meeting, it's very important for every single person, every senior associate, every PMD to know exactly what their goals are for that week. And you hold them accountable to it. Meeting after the meeting after the meeting. Each team leader takes his or her team to another room to hold a breakout meeting. So I want my provisional marketing directors, I want my provisional marketing directors to my senior associates, which I treat like marketing directors, they have their meeting after the meetings. And here's what their meeting after the meetings are supposed to do. Each team leader divides the responsibility for the week's mission among each team member. So if I have, if I have, if I have Jennifer Ramos, and, and she knows from her team, what I need from her team, she's got to be able to do 10 recruits this week, right? So she takes her team to the side after the meeting, after the meeting, and go, hey, here's our goal. I'll go this week. We've got to do 10 recruits in the base shop this week, right? The, pra the team leader has a reality check and endurance and practice, practice for the team. Each team member leaves the meeting knowing his or her responsibility for the week. So every single person in your base shop has to know, okay, what do I need to do to block my guy? What exactly do I need to do to help contribute to the team? What Rich Tolley talks about is every leader in the team has to pull their own red wagon. So I want all my leaders, I want all my senior associates, all my PMDs to know exactly what they need to do to make the vision of the team, to make the team's dreams come true. Right? So I want, I want to make sure that we have that. And as a leader, it's very important. Check in the system. Now, this is a meeting you do. This is a meeting with, you do with your full-timers. Right? We check the system. The BFS needs accountability. Meeting after the meeting is the place to check your system. The business format system. We look at the business format system. And exactly, exactly did we run all the classes? Did we go over all the information? Are we running the system the way it's supposed to, to run the system? And this is where you want to encourage everyone on your team to make sure that they're, make sure that they're reading the business format system. They're reviewing it. I ask people, I ask, uh, I ask my teammates all the time, say, hey, I see you reading all these books, but let me ask you a question. When was the last time you read the business format system, right? You want to make sure that they're, they're reading the business format. Mozone, you want to talk about Mozone. You want to talk about issues in Mozone. If we have people talking about licensing, or if we have people not focus on a Mozone, right? You want to talk about that. Trainers, you want to talk about the trainers. If they're dressed properly, if they're dressed properly, if they're up speaking, to make sure that they're dressed properly. They've got a coat and tie on. Their shoes are shine. Their, their fingernails are, are shine. People are constantly checking them, checking them. They don't have earrings on. They've got proper haircuts and all of that stuff. You want to let the trainers know that their responsibility is people are checking you out. So I don't want someone training and he's got an earring on, long hair, and it's, it doesn't have a tie, his shoes dirty, but yet he's up there training. I want to make sure I control that. The trainers know that. And leaders. I want, to, I want to identify who my next, who my next marketing directors in my base shop are going to be. So who I'm spending my majority of my time with, right? High level building session. This is a time and place to talk about the higher law. And this, these are the things you do with the leaders, right? You talk about the spirit of giving, being good to each other, right? We, we, we're part of a team where we constantly look. We, here's, what I, here's the environment I want on my team. If you are negative, dead butt, cry baby, you can't be on the Synergy team. Because we don't allow you to be on the Synergy team. You can't do that. That's not allowed. That's not allowed. And what I want my team to know, we have a team spirit. We have a team spirit. We're fired up, we're excited, we're pumped up. And you don't have to be, you don't have to be crazy pumped up. You don't have to be, you don't have to yell and scream. You just gotta be a pumped up you. You gotta be a little excited. I talked to Tom about that the other day. When, when, when people see you, they've gotta go, man, there's something different about Thelma. You know, she's a little bit more pumped up. She's a little bit more excited. You know, she's got a, you know, she's got a little pep in her step, right? You gotta be a little pumped up you. 
You look at Walter, right? Walter, this guy, this guy doesn't do anything big, but he's continuing. He comes to the meetings every Tuesday, every Saturday, always there, right? One of the guys on your team, you go, man, if this guy wins, man, when this guy wins, now he's got a team. He's got a team. He's got 35 people in Vegas. And they're not in Vegas, in Texas. This team recruited 35 people in Texas, right? So all of these people, right? So you start developing a team spirit when people have, where, let me ask you a question. Do your teammates feel good about being on your team? Yeah. Or being on a team? Is there a vision for the team? Is there a mission? So you start teaching those principles. Reputation. You start talking about reputation. Reputation and character, there's two differences in reputation and character. Understanding, understanding when you get up front, when you start to lead, right, people are going to talk about you. And that's okay. That's okay. Because as long as they're talking about you, they're, look, they're usually looking at your, you know what, right? And not to get the different, not to get mixed up between your reputation and your character. See, reputation is what people think you are. Your character is what you know you stand for and know who you are. And as long as you know you're, as long as you know you're a good person, you're intense in the right place, I care less what people think about me. And you let them know that, right? And that's what, and the leader has to be strong enough as not to care about what other people think about you because it's none of your business, right? So you teach those concepts. Then you have specific building techniques. Like this Monday, this Monday morning, we talked about tap rooting. We talked about tap rooting, the power of tap rooting. Then you talk about specific building techniques, and you know your team, you know exactly what they need to hear. The art of interaction, the art of interaction. Be good to each other. Be good to each other. If you hear someone, if you hear someone talking bad about someone else on the team, go, hey, shame on you. Shame on you. As a matter of fact, that's weakness. When you're, when you're constantly talking about something bad in someone else, it's usually a sign that you don't feel good about yourself. That's why you're constantly looking at the bad in other people. That's weakness. When I meet people like that, I hear you, you tell, but you're put in a category in my book. You're not even in the game because you don't understand it. You might win temporarily, but you won't win big time. So you teach those principles. Communication among your team. Communication among your team is detrimental to you that you communicate with your team. You got to communicate. I have a core people in my base shop, which I believe, which I believe, which our next wave of marketing directors will promote eight, nine, ten marketing directors back to back, right? Those people I want to communicate with every day. So if you're on the team, let me ask you a question. If you're on the team and you call your leader, let me ask you a question. Do you get a voicemail? If you get a voicemail, then you're not putting in any, any numbers. You're not growing a business if you get a voicemail. If you get a voicemail when you call your leaders. My people that perform, I've got a top 10, top 15, top 20. Anytime they call me, boom, I'm on the phone with them. Hey, what's going on? And it usually has to do with business, right? Here's what I got. Here's a situation I got. Boom, I want to constantly communicate with my team because I understand this, right? People don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. And I want my team to know that all the time. There hasn't been a time that I called Ed Mallette and he hasn't picked up the phone to talk to me. If I call him, even if he's at a meeting, even if he's at a meeting, he'll pick up the phone and he'll go, hey, Dan, is it important? What do you need? Boom. Even if it's two minutes, we talk on the phone. Because he knows I would not call him unless I need to talk to him about something. And then you've got to create that within your team where they can talk to you, right? You're, where you're approachable. You're not non-approachable, right? MD preparation, right? We talk about how prepared are you for the meeting? Did you really take the time out to visualize the entire night, to visualize your pregame, to visualize the Mozone, to visualize how your people feel when they walk into that meeting, when they leave, how your team feels? Did you take the time out to really prepare? All the speakers. So as the classes are going, as a leader, what I want to do is I want to go into each class and I want to watch the leaders teach in the class. And here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking at their physiology. I'm looking at their language. I'm looking at their focus. I'm looking at to see if they're casual about teaching the system, if they're sitting down on the chair or sitting down on the desk, or if they, how they teaching, how's their physiology. I want to watch that as a leader, right? And these are some of the things that we talk about in MD preparation. The eight speed filters, the top three. It's important that all the first three speed filters take place within 10 to 15 minutes. Stay after the BPM for Mozone. Leader encouraging you recruit to stay after the meeting. 
So we want to make sure that we want to make sure that if you have a guess that these first three speed filters have to be run within 10 to 15 minutes. They get the kit. Leaders help the recruit get a BPM decision kit, commit to a follow-up interview within 24 to 48 hours. And here's, here's the thing, your team has to have a vision. For our team on the Synergy team, we're building a team within the next three years where our team's gonna help at least 100,000 families, and we want to develop 300 financially independent leaders within the Synergy team, which means this, someone joins the Synergy team, and they go, you know what, if I had a cash flow of $30,000 a year, I'd be financially independent. Well, we gotta get that guy to 300,000. Right? You got $300,000 saved, he's getting a 10% rate of return, that gives him a cash flow of, uh, that gives him cash flow of $30,000 a year. 300 financially independent leaders, 20 field vice chairmen, 20 C CEOs, 260 marketing directors, EMDs, and all, all the things that I want to have, I want to have personally. These are some of the things that I want to have personally. Now here's the thing, the Synergy team knows, hey, that's not going to happen if we're chucking along recruiting 10, 20, 30 people a month. We gotta get we gotta get where we're recruiting a hundred, we gotta get to a point where we're recruiting a hundred recruits a month for years in order for that to happen. So we've got to harness the law of larger numbers, right? So they've got their goals. Every single person on my team, on the synergy team, has this right here. If I can get Elmo on, please. Right? We've got we've got took this idea right here. Synergy team year of expansion. So you join, you join the Synergy team, right? We're recruiting one-on-one. -on -one. You know, hey, what do you want your office to be, right? When Aegon, listen, listen to this, you guys. When Aegon bought out, bought WMA Securities, they put a 30-year business plan when they bought our company. Their goal is to grow our company by 500%. That's their goal. So they don't want everyone in Pomona. Right? So I don't want my team thinking, hey, I'm just going to stay here in a little boutique. It feels good in here. I'm excited. I'm just, I don't want no little country club. I want them thinking, like Jennifer Ramos comes in the base. She knows she's in the base for about 12 to 18 months. She learns everything about the system. She builds her team. She gets her cash flow up. She goes over 100 grand, and bam, she opens up her office, right? Because the business format system says you focus on two things, right? You're focusing on developing an outlet. And what is an outlet? An outlet is a licensed agent. That means that you for, they've got a securities license and a life license, and they know how to produce a result across the kitchen table. That's an outlet, right? So that's a fundamental. But the second thing you've got to get is an outlet opener. And what exactly is an outlet opener? A marketing director, right? A marketing director that's been, that's been through the prototype-based shop, understands the system, understands the psychology of the Mozone, understands how to orchestrate it, understands how to visualize it, understands how to teach all the classes and all that stuff, develop leaders and all of that stuff, right? And now we start opening up offices all over the world. I talked to, I talked to Bryce Peterson when I was on a tour speaking for the company. And Bryce Peterson said, you, he said to me this, he said, you know what, Dan? I built my entire business in an 18-month period. In an 18-month period, the leaders that came out of my base shop in an 18-month period, I spent 18 months with, with leaders. I kept getting directs, keep sell, kept selling the vision, kept getting after it. In those 18 months, I built leaders that built my entire hierarchy in 18 months. Let me ask you a question. What are you talking to your team about? Do your team, does your team have an identity? Do they know who they are? When they can walk into a room like this, do they feel scared? Do they feel like they're behind it? Do they feel like, oh, we're competing with this, we're competing with that? Here's what I want to tell you. Our team, we're not competing with any one of you guys. Frankly, we're going to kick everybody's butt. I told my team last night. I told my team last night. And that's not just talk. We're doing the day-to-day -day stuff. So I hope you knuckle up and you're ready to go. And, and here's the deal. Here's the deal I know with, I know some of the marketing directors in here, I watch your physiology, I watch your language, I watch the way you walk, I watch how casual you are. But here's the deal. Here's where you're gonna get me. What are you doing every day? See, I'm getting off my butt every day I get in the office. I'm accountable to my people every single day. I know I'll do that every single day. I'm constantly working on me. Some of you are struggling just getting in the office. You roll up in the office at 11, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and you wonder why your people not to get in the office, because they're following you, 
right? Because you lost, you lost sight. You're not as excited as you used to be. You talk a good game, but you're not as excited as you used to be. I look at what you do, not what you say. You could talk all day long, but are you doing the things that you should be doing every single day? Now, we're not all perfect. I don't expect everyone to be on, my, on our team to be perfect, but I expect you to give, give it your all and get after it. It's not how many times you get knocked down. You get knocked down, you get back up, and you get after it, right? So we're going to compete. We're going to have fun. We got a vision for the RBLC. And frankly, uh, we were in Tahiti. We were in Tahiti, and some of the, some of the uh, marketing directors, some of the marketing directors were, were talking junk. They were talking junk about, about our team. When they, when, li listen to this, you guys. When you guys are around people and you hear them talk about any of the leaders, whether it's Rob Day, Levitan, or whether it's, whether it, uh, it's Ed Mallet, you got to have some hair grow behind your back. you got to have hair grow behind your back. That's got to piss you off. And you gotta, you have a, you've got to have a voice. You go, hey, shut up. What are you talking about? You're talking, you're, you're talking at us because we're kicking your butt. That's why we're talking about us, right? Get, a, get, get aggressive about that. And when I was in Tahiti, you guys, I got fired up. I go, man, these guys are talking about us. Great. We got them right where we want them. It's time to go to work. It's time to work hard and make all this stuff happen. We should have our own division as a team. We should have our own division. But here's the bigger question for me. For us to have our own division, who do I need to become? Who do I need to become for us to have our own division? You want your marketing director to go to CEO, who do you need to become for him to go to CEO? You want your marketing director to go to SMD, who do you need to become to be go, come, for him to go to SMD or CEO, whatever the level is, right? So that's the bigger question. That's the bigger question I ask myself. Now, it's not gonna happen if you're not excited it's not going to happen if you're not reading your goals every day. It's not going to, it's not going to happen if you're not reading your affirmations every day because you're going to be up and down, up and down, and up and down. You've got to get excited. You've got to feel good about what you do. When every time Ed calls me, the number one question he calls me, he asks me, hey, how you feel? I go, do it. I feel great. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what I need to work on. I get up every day and I prospect. I'm on voice tell with my team every single day, letting them know, hey, I just prospected this person. Boom. I recruit someone direct to me. I lift them up in the meeting after the meeting. Hey, remember when I sent this voice tell out, I told you I prospected this lady right here? Here she is. She gets up front. Hey, yeah, yeah. And, and they see that. And guess what starts happening in the team? They start to prospect. They start to talk to people. And now they're starting to get results. And now you start getting your team excited. You start getting them focused, right? And they start building that discipline. Next thing you know, next thing you know, it just develops right in front of you. It just develops all your dreams and all your aspirations, everything that you've wanted to achieve develops in front of you. So I hope you guys got something out of that. You guys have a great day.